Hello, a very good morning and welcome along to round four of the 2022 MotoGP Esport Championship. It's great to be with you in this slightly different hour to what we're <laughs> accustomed to, but as you wait for the action to get underway for the Japanese Grand Prix, Myself and Jack will try and keep you company over the next hour or so. And if you are tuning in for MotoGP eSport action for the very first time, first of all, where have you been? And second of all, strap yourselves in because we can offer some pretty good action. Yeah, it's certainly going to be plenty of action coming up for you tonight. Then round four, we are on now of the 2022 Global Series. Two cracking races coming up for you with Mategi and then also Bori Ram. And recently, there's been a real swing in championship momentum. Last time out, Christian MM17 taking a fantastic double win. Jack, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out tonight. But before we dive into the rest of the action tonight, let's make sure we rewind back to round three of the 2022 Globe Series and just run you through everything that happened last time out. So as Jack said, it was without doubt the Christian MM17 show last time out at round three of the 2022 Global Series. There was action aplenty as we promised with the 2020 world champion Adrian making an uncharacteristic error during our race at Jerez. Jack Hammer and the reigning world champion Trast went toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder throughout it. But this was the man that everyone was talking about. A first win in over two years from pole position. And then we headed to the Red Bull ring where we once again fired away from pole. Yep, just like London buses then, two came along at once. Got the perfect start and led pretty much the whole way. Trastevere was fighting through from a belief eight from the grid in the end. That was a dramatic moment for Piero Ricciuti running strongly in second. And then that race, well, it pretty much exploded his race from that point. I think he finished all the way down in around seventh in the end. Jack Hammer also had a little slip off as he crashed out of a strong position. But coming across the line, it was Christian MM17 to take an emphatic double win. And as you said, Jack, that really saw a momentum swing in the championship going into it. Our 2020 king, sorry, our 2021 king, should I say. Trast was taking a, a pretty dominant lead in the championship, but two poor qualifying performances and two sort of below average results means that it's tightened up at the top. Just look at that. Our three all-time champions are there. Trast, a three-time winner. Severi on the Suzuki this year, our 2019 king. And Adran, the 2020 winner, split by just four and a half points. We've now only four races remaining. Christian back in contention. 12 and a half adrift. He's going to have to try and conjure up some of that form from last time out to get himself back into contention with both Jack Hammer and Piero Ricciuti needing, well, I think it's fair to say, a bit of a miracle to get back into title contention, Jack. Yeah, well, I'm certainly going to be keeping my eyes on Christian MM17 this evening. And as we know, for race seven coming up very, very shortly indeed. He's got the perfect setup, certainly, going from pole position, as you'll find out very, very shortly indeed. But for now then, it is time to start turning our attentions to race seven, the first one of the evening here for round four of the 2022 Global Series. And before we dive in, we just need to run you through all of the cru crucial info that you need to know as we head to the Buriram circuit in Thailand. So then, here we go, race info for race number seven of the 2022 Global Series. It is indeed gonna be Buriram in Thailand. It's good, certainly going to be a tricky one. One of the faster tracks we have on the calendar, but also there are some dead stop hairpins in there and some tight little nadgery sections as we go through sectors two and three of the circuit. You can see here then the rules that you need to know. Of course, they're always the same as ever, but the, the things you need to look out for, tyre and fuel consumption going to be proportionate and also collisions on as well. So watch out for bumping and barging as we head through turn one. So then we're ready to go in Thailand. Going to be dry, it's going to be hot, and it certainly is going to be a tricky one indeed. 4.6 kilometers in length, seven right turns, not so many left ones here. It is quite a, uh, a clockwise track, but five of those, some of them crucial. You think through turn 10, the final run down to get towards that dead stop hairpin at the end. Watch out for that one. It's going to be a crucial one. 2019, Mark Marquez and Fabio Quattararo went head to head there, where Mark wrapped up his eighth title and it's going to be interesting indeed to see just how this plays out. It certainly is, yeah, as you mentioned there, Jack. So many overtaking opportunities in Thailand. Of course, we've not been here since 2019 in real life. We'll be heading there very shortly in real life, but 
It's time for these uh, virtual gamers, these eSport gamers, to tackle the Bury Ram circuit. Keep your eye on the final corner, the opening corner, and as Jack mentioned, that run down to that dead stop hairpin, especially on the first lap, it's probably going to be pretty chaotic. Here we go then, race seven of the 2022 Global Series, about to get underway. Let's go racing at the Chang International Circuit in Bury Ram. Hello and welcome along then to race seven of 10 in the 2022 Global Series. It's time to get down to business at the Chang International Circuit in Buriram. And what a grid we've got lined up for this one, Jack. It's going to be the main man, Christian MM17, trying to go for a hat-trick of wins from pole position with his brother, Adrian, keeping a close watch in second. Rounding out that front row of the grid, the Suzuki of Severin. And the big hitters don't stop there. Then Pierre Ricciuti lines up in fourth on his factory Ducati. And there is Trastevere, a slightly better qualifying than last time out. But still, fifth is not where he'll want to be. In sixth, shout out to this man, Vindex. A solid qualifying once again in sixth. Struggling this weekend so far, Jack Hammer, front row number three. Ahead of, uh, or behind him, sorry, Spada Longo in the VR46 machine and the Aprilia of Davide Galini. And then Randon is out. It will be Tati Go on the Cresini Racing Ducati in 10th. 11th is our newcomer last time out, Umash Drew. He qualifies 11th for this one. And completing the grid, it is the Australian Mr. T on the Pramac Ducati. So here we go then. Round four of the 2022 Global Series about to get underway. Hull shots have been engaged. The lights are out. And away we go in Bury Ram. And for the third time in a row, it is a Dynamite start Whoa. from pole position by Christian MM17. Meanwhile, behind, there's some moving, there's some shaking between this man or Trast, a big wheelie. He loses a lot of drive and drops down to seventh as a result. Meanwhile, at the front, it looks like Adrian has oh. managed to pick the pocket. Oh, so very, so far out of control. Down he goes, breaking way too late. And the Suzuki man is out on the opening lap. Incredible drama then. That is Andreas Very in the gravel. Looks as though he was breaking on the rumble strip and just got it out of control. Incidentally, oh, look at that. Piero Ricciuti up into oh. second place. Great start then from the Ducati man. It was actually a really, really good launch off the line from Trastevere. But I think he just went in a little bit deep through turn one, got on to the curb on the outside and just lost all that drive that he had. So a great start from fifth all the way up to third. And now he's dropped back down to sixth. I'd love to know what happened to Christian as well, Jack, because he got the perfect start and looked like the perfect drive out of the opening corner. And then suddenly we flicked back to see Trastevere having his troubles. And when we got back to the front, it was Adrian ahead of him. So maybe he's lost a bit of drive somewhere, getting on the rumble strip potentially. But uh, unfortunately, the man looking for three wins in a row finds himself down in third. Tell you what, though, the man that we haven't even spoke about yet, the guy on the VR46 oh, Ducati, Spadalongo, up from eighth to fourth. I saw him dive up the inside at turn one. I think he actually nailed Piero Ricciuti in the side. Piero Ricciuti goes for the lead then. So we didn't see this coming. The Ducati man hits the front. But how for long will he hold on to it? He's run wide through turn one. Oh, Adrian on the Honda has got through. Trust has gone down. down to ninth. What He's happened? gone down. The world championship leader or first oh. world championship leader has gone down. And now for a second time as he tries to rejoin the track, he comes into contact with you, Mastro. Oh, what drama on this second lap of 10 here in Buriram. The three-time king making a mistake, crashing out and dropping right to the back of the pack. So this is going to have huge connotations then in the championship. You can see there he's already lost that championship lead. He was four ahead of Adrian coming into this. He's now going to be six behind a 10-point swing. What drama in race seven at the 2022 Global Series. Can you believe it? Trask making an error. We didn't see the crash. I'm sure we'll get a replay imminently to see what happened exactly. But that is what can happen when you qualify further down on the grid. You don't make a good start. It was bogged down to seven at one point. You can, and I'm not saying this has happened, get caught up in another rider's incident. Meanwhile, no such problems at the front for Adrian. Now, four tenths of a second clear after Piero Ricciuti managed to edge his way in front, but only momentarily. Christian, however, just struggling to find his rhythm here. We're so used to 
particularly from round three. See him hit the front and just check out. But unfortunately, for his sake anyway, he's not going all his own way this time around. So fastest lap then for Adrian coming across the line that time round 26.5. We have seen them do laps quicker than that in qualifying practice and also free practices before this. So certainly there's a bit more pace left in it and that will be music to the ears of Christian MM17 because we've seen him put in some seriously fast laps into the low 26s. So we know there's the pace there for him to come surging through. We'll have to see how it plays out in the remaining seven and a half laps. Every time through turn three, the braking's so late and running it so deep. I'm thinking they're gonna go wide and someone will be able to sneak up through the inside. Ooh, Gero's deep there. Having to, yeah, mistake Very from Ricciuti. Mistake from Ricciuti. Surely Christian will be able to swing through. No, not on this occasion. That will, of course, be a track limits warning for Ricciuti, but he's got away with one there. It certainly has. It looked as though it just dragged in Christian as well. Just breaking a little bit too late. Saw Piero go in and just sucked him into the corner too. But we're seeing now that that gap at the front has opened up to seven tenths of a second. And I've got to admit, that is what we call a comfortable buffer in MotoGP eSport. Anything plus half a second, that is manageable. So Adrian, all the chips are falling his way at the moment. So far, so good, as you say, for the Repsol Honda man. But things could change here. If Christian is able to get himself in front of Ricciuti could well start to chase down his brother at the front. It would be a, a Montenegro sandwich at the moment with Ricciuti filling in the middle, but we could see a Montenegro 1-2 if he's able to find a way through. At the back of the pack though, there's your championship leader or as Forward. we said, erstwhile championship leader. Here's what happened Here then. On the brakes into the opening corner. Just He's a little wide. bit heavy onto the green stuff. The rear wheel just losing traction as he went over the curb. Down he went as he's rejoined the track. Straight into the way of you, Mastro. And Hold that on. just rub, has rubbed some salt into the wounds. And he went down oh, a third, third time. Oh, Can disaster. you believe it? Three crashes in a row. That is a total disaster for Trast. Three crashes in the space of 20 seconds. He is dead last and, as a result, will, without doubt now, lose the championship lead. So we have to say then, that is a complete loss of composure from, well, the, the largely unflappable man in MotoGP Esports Series. Trastadere then, this one really has fallen apart and his championship lead is no more. Christian MM17 then still going about his work on Piero Ricciuti at the front. That gap at the front has actually stabilised. Piero's got back into it after a couple of mistakes. Eight attempts back then from Adrian. Looks as though he's not going to be able to do too much about the Honda man. So really his focus has to be on keeping clean and making sure that he doesn't give Christian an opportunity to pounce. Coming through turn one then, firing on to this very long straight here in Buriram. We've seen so many times, even in qualifying, we saw these guys behind each other getting a large slipstream and pulling in a tent for two. Look at that, Christian, by the time he gets down to this bottom turn two and three, he is closing in rapidly. And I tell you what, Kieran's got a bit of a, a slipstream there as well. That gap's down to just about five or six tenths. Meanwhile, let's have a look further down the field. Findex has now got himself in front of Spadalongo, who, regardless, is still having a great ride to be up inside the top five. Strong performance actually coming from Mr. T as well in six. Yeah, Tati goes seven. Davide Galini at eighth. And then these guys are uh, not where we expected to see the mistakes coming from all of them. I actually didn't see uh, Jack Hammer's crash pop up, but he must have had a, an off somewhere to be behind Andreas Saberi, who, of course, went down on that opening lap then. You master and Trast, a long way adrift in 11th and 12th following their coming together. There's uh, Spadalongo we saw momentarily, having a good ride, keeping tabs as well with Vindex. Mr T going well, the Australian, as close to home soil as we <laughs> yeah. will get to throughout this championship. Of course, we're not heading to Phillip Island in a 2022 Global Series. There's Davide Galina, and this could be oh so important in the championship. You see Severi behind there. Closing in on Galinia and then Tatigo and then Mr. T. There's still plenty of time left in this race. We've only just reached half race distance. If he can pick up two or this three is positions. Crash. Yep. Look at that on wow. the curbs. That's braking there at 200 mile an hour as they hit the brakes there. And he's on the curbs and that is never going to work out. Goes all the way through the gravel trap to the barrier. Uh, thankfully, of course, it's a damage. 
done. But Andreas Averi, as you do say, Jack, closing in rapidly on Davide Galina on that Aprilia. And you've got to say, what's the gaps there in front of him? Nine tenths and two tenths. If he can make up a couple of positions, maybe nip up into this top six, with Trast Averi down in 12th and really not going to make any more progress than that, it's, uh, it's not a bad damage limitation job. Yeah, if he can get himself in front of Mr. T. At the moment, in nine, he'll be scoring three and a half points. If he was to get up to six, he would score five points. Those extra 1.5 points, it might sound minuscule, but you never but know. Everything. You never know come the end of the season just how important that could be. We've seen even with double points at the final round in previous years, this championship being decided by the smallest of margins. At the front, though, still, all going to plan for Adrian. He is three quarters of a second clear of Pierre Ricciuti. And the Ducati man actually has responded quite well here. He's now got, what, three or four bike lengths, a, a comfort buffer, shall we say, over Christian MM17 in third. We'll uh, keep a close eye on Severi here to see if he can manage to close the gap to Trast in this championship fight. First, he's got to try and get ahead of Davide Galina, who himself, the Aprilia man, looking for a way through on Tati Go there, but can't get the job done. Back at the front, though, and still Adrian leading the way. Yeah, doing the job here, Adrian. We said about that comfortable buffer, anything over half a second, that it's just to and fro in from somewhere around half a second to up towards three quarters of a second. So certainly Adrian doing exactly what he needs to do to hold Piero Ricciuti at bay at the moment. And even Christian M17, I thought we'd maybe see a little... Oh, Tati Go's gone down out of a good position. That's a shame. He was running strongly in seventh. But what that does do is it gives Andreas a very a position. Now, actually, two, he's nipped two. in front of Davide Galina as well. So that's big progress then for Andreas Severi. He's going to pick up a handful more points. Just one. So, so <laughs> one or two positions gained? Is two positions gained. Normally two points, but half points means yeah, true. just the one. True. So, <laughs> well, sadness, but also progress. Let's, let's put it like that. Look at this, four tenths under. Here we go. This could be something. If Pierre Retreaty can get into this slipstream zone, we've got two mammoth straights coming up here after turn one. He might just be able to get close enough to pounce. Here we go. Come on, Piero. Let's see if we can close in on the bit rear of wheel. I know. Let's see if we can have ourselves a bit of a ding dong in the closing stages of this one. It's been too easy for my liking for Adrian so far, not to take Whoa. anything away from his efforts. It's been a perfect ride so far, getting the better of his brother on that opening lap and hasn't looked back since then. But suddenly that gap now is as close as it has been all race long is the rear wheel the rear tire should i say of that repsol honda just not gonna help. starting to fade a mistake there so that's another tenth in favor of the ducati man this could build into quite the crescendo great time to come on board here with christian staring at these two closing together as we dive into the last two and a half laps Incredibly tricky section of the track, this this one in particular. So easy to run in too fast. You see there, Piero getting it really stopped nice and slow through the middle of the corner to make sure he can get it fired out. And this gap now is hovering around that four tenth margin. We see even now coming down into three and a half tenths, it seems to time to cue the Jaws music because the wild child is on the way. It certainly is. The wild child is there. He's lurking oh, in the he's background. Oh, he's going deep there. That's not going to help. That is a bit of a mistake. Compromised his exit, that's for sure. And look at the gap grow now. He'll surely be up to half a second shortly. Yeah, just about. Just ticks over there. So that's a costly, costly error from Ricciuti there. And he doesn't get the right drive out of the opening corner. This long, long run through turn two, which is there. Not really a, a corner, more of just a little left-hand kink before... We go towards turn three. Ooh, Adrian in a little bit deep there. He well, gets a nice slingshot run onto this second straight that we've got here in Buriram. Certainly one of the few tracks in MotoGP where these MotoGP bikes can really stretch their legs. But now, as you say, Jack, a couple of mistakes and that gap is back up to eight tenths now for Piero Ricciuti. And all of a sudden, he's actually under pressure rather than putting the pressure on. Once again, he goes wide. So Piero Ricciuti, just a little bit of composure starting to go away as we come into crunch time in this race with a lap and a half to go. You can be guaranteed that Christian's eyes are lighting up here. He can smell second place. He can smell a brotherly one-two here in Buriram. But time is running out. Only one and a half laps to go for the LCR man to try and find a way through on Ricciuti. 
Content to watch then as we just look down a little bit further into the pack. Andrea Severi is only four tenths behind Mr. T. If he can get that final sixth place, that'll be absolutely crucial. But here we go then, back to concentrating at the front. One lap to go. We fly onto it now. Adrian surely has it in the bag, but Pierre Ricciuti is under all kinds of pressure. Ricciuti goes defensive. He tries to cover it off on the inside. Just about makes the apex there through the opening corner. But Christian is right with him. Surely he's going to have a look on the brakes into turn three. There he goes, looking to the inside. And there he goes, flying past the Ducati oh. man. Both as hard on the brakes as you can imagine. But no way through. What defence from Ricciuti. Brilliant stuff from the Ducati rider. That is one big place then. Fended off brilliantly by Ricciuti. He's got it hooked up and driving out down turn three. Down towards this slingshot turn four. Incredibly crucial, he doesn't go too wide here and get it onto the rumble strip, he doesn't. So that's another place where he hasn't lost any time. And if anything, he's starting to put some pressure on Adrian, <laughs> making him sweat for this final half of a lap. Can you believe it? Look at this. He's got rid of Christian MM17. He's shaken off the attention of one Spaniard and he's now got his clutches in on the Spaniard ahead of him. Surely he's not going to be able to magic something up in this final half a lap here. It is half a second. It's surely going to be comfortable for Adrian, but it's not comfortable enough for him to stop concentrating just yet. Look at the glare in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. He's into the final sector now, running down towards the final corner. Surely he's got it in the bag. Just one corner to go for the Repsol Honda man. There he goes. Oh. An important oh, performance oh, for Adrian. He's third oh win of the year and with it comes the championship lead Ricciuti has to settle for second with Christian's dreams of a hat-trick dashed here in Buriram a podium nevertheless for the LCR man Vindex in fourth and a first ever esports top five for Spadalongo congratulations then to Spadalongo and Vindex two fantastic rides behind big some of the big three in this championship Trastevere comes across the line in 11th then he doesn't finish last in this race he picks up 11th for another half a point I do believe so if my maths is correct it'll be seven and a half back at the end of this one race seven but we'll just wait for the race director to approve the results and here they go then so there you are Adrian win number three of 2022 if he had to sweat a little bit but in the end it was comfortable ahead of Pierre Ricciuti Christian MM17 gave it a big push on the final lap but couldn't quite get ahead of the Catty. Vindex fourth and Spadalongo fifth. That surely is a personal best for those two. Congratulations. Andreas, a very fantastic damage limitation there to come back through from ninth to sixth in the last couple of laps. And Jack Hammer, David Egalinia, Mr. T, Tati Go, the big story, Trastevere finishing 29 seconds off the lead and losing the championship lead. And you, Mastru, rounds us out in 12th place. And for the first time since our opening race of 10 in 2022, we have a change in the championship lead. Trastevere throwing away his advantage with Adrian, our race winner, now taking over control in the title picture. Let's speak with him now. A third win of the season, Adrian. And I imagine you're going to say your most important one yet retaking the championship lead. Talk us through that eventful race. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, the race uh, was very difficult because uh, uh, Piero was behind uh, all laps, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. So it will, uh, it was very difficult to to be focused and, uh, and to keep uh, a good pace. But I am very happy with this victory because uh, there are uh, some uh, important points for the for the jumpers, but uh, now we have another difficult race in in Modei and uh, I hope to to repeat uh, our dress. Well, big congratulations! A hugely important win in our 2022 championship fight. You now jump to the top of the standings. He came into this one, Jack, third overall, with Severi managing to sneak ahead of him. How things have changed now, as we see these dramatic moments in Buriram. There's the first crash, there's number two, and imminently we'll see number three. Can you believe it? Three crashes in the space of 20 seconds. See our championship leader, or erstwhile as we've said, our three-time champion come across the line in 11th and throw away his advantage. 
yeah, certainly a very, very important race then for the championship picture. You can see there down the bottom right, and this is the way it was, and that is the way it will be pretty much. We thought on the last lap that Christian might just sneak through on Piero Ricciuti, but no, it wasn't to be in the end. And for a minute there as well, we thought that Piero was going to put some pressure on Adrian, but no, that wasn't either. And he did indeed come across the line for a fantastic victory. For crossing the line then, the third race victory of the season. Congratulations to Adrian. Certainly, as you say, Jack, quite rightly, the most important of his 2022 campaign so far. But that is now in the past done and dusted. We've got to move on to Mitegi, haven't we? It certainly is. We've seen him make mistakes in this championship fight uh, on occasion so far this year. Hareff springs to mind. So Adrian knows he'll have to be at full focus for our upcoming race at Mategi. I think we can officially say we're kick-starting the Japanese Grand Prix weekend. <laughs> this is the first track Finally. action of the weekend. Uh, let's just firstly bring you up to speed with all of the key information you're going to need ahead of this one. So Mategi then, a very particular track indeed. One that tests, well, both rider and machine to the absolute limit. But of course, you can see there the rules. It is indeed race eight. And heading to Mategi for the first time in quite some time, of course. In real life, we haven't been there for three years. 2019 was the last time. You can see there the rules, as always, the exact same. And in terms of the circuit itself, well, it's quite a tricky one indeed. Not actually too short, to be fair. Mategi is quite long. 4.9 kilometers it was with eight right turns and six left fairly even with its construction and we've seen in history many great battles around Mategi you can see there some of the big, big talking points of course at the end of the back straight that huge drop down huge dead stop 90 degree right hander that is going to be one of the key overtaking areas and even coming into that final flip-flop it's a very tricky section indeed and we've got to watch out for them trying a cheeky last minute, last lap lunge manoeuvre just in there. So here we go then, who's going to be able to carry all of the momentum into our grand finale, the double point showdown in Valencia. This is it, race eight of 10 in the 2022 Global Series. Let's get the Japanese Grand Prix weekend officially underway by going racing at Matek. Here we go then, it's time to go racing for one final time today at the Twin Ring Mategi. This is going to be action packed. I can just feel it in the pit of my stomach, Jack. I've got <laughs> butterflies thinking about this one and it will be the wild child for duty to fire away from pole position. A new championship leader, Adrian, on the middle of the front row of the grid with Christian looking to bounce back from third. Speaking of looking to bounce back, Jack Hamill will be wanting a second better performance here in this second race of the evening and there is another man that needs to bounce back Trastevere after that disastrous outing in the first race he heads off from fifth ahead of Andrea Severi on the Suzuki in sixth front in row three of the grid is Vindex on the with you RNF Yamaha Spadalongo fresh from a career best result will start a Fantatigo on the Cresini Ducati fires away from nine there's Davide Galina in 10th on the Aprilia. Watch out for him making exuberant starts on the first lap. Mr. T in 11th and rounding us out in 12th. It is you, Mastru, on the Tech 3 KTM. Here we go then, 10 laps ahead of us. Around Mategi, Ricciuti on the Ducati will fire away from pole position now. And it's a good start as well, but not Ooh. as good as Adrian and Christian as well. Both Hondas able to fire through and take first and second. He's nudged wide his Ricciuti and he misses out big time. The pole man drops from first to third in the blink of an eye. Trastevere then hasn't made up any ground, but hasn't lost any either. So certainly not too bad, not a disaster off the line for the Yamaha man. Looks as Andreas Severi is going to look up the inside of the pole man. Pierre Ricciuti going backwards already. But the dream start then for the Montenegro brothers. Adrian first, Christian second. This is absolutely the dream start for Adrian. He's just taken over at the top of the championship. And now he's hit the front nice and early here in Mategi. And he's got his brother almost uh, acting as a bodyguard behind him to keep his championship Whoa, rivals Tati at goes bay. on the grass. Oh, disaster for the Grassini man. He's going to drop to the back of the pack. Got it all wrong there. So Tatigo back down to 12th Whoa. as a result. Yeah, Ricciuti's up to second. 
He is. He's when managed they do to that. squeeze through. Just as we were looking at Tati go and seeing what happened with him, the Ducati man has pounced and suddenly Adrian's bodyguard has been disposed of. But he's going to run wide. Mistake from Ricciuti. He's going to hand second place back to Christian. Is he the pair of side by side? Remember, it is equal machinery here, so he can't rely on Ducati power down in towards the bottom of the back straight for the very first time. Oh. Such a difficult braking zone, but it looks as though our key contenders have made it through A-OK. -okay. So then it's all back in. Oh, look at this. Trattaveri is going to look for an opportunistic move. Andrea Severi, he runs across the kerb on the inside. That allows the Yamaha man to get the drive. Fantastic then, Trastevere up to fourth and look at Jack Hammer 2 trying to pounce on the Suzuki. Can't quite do it or maybe he does it now. Has Andrea gone in a little bit deep possibly? But no, just going to be able to sweep it around the outside and hang on. So look at this already then, Adrian almost eight tenths clear. This is almost an exact carbon copy of the scenario we had in race seven earlier on. It's an impressive start <clears throat> from Adrian. Sorry, I'm just losing my voice a little bit there. The <laughs> excitement has got to me. Meanwhile, Trast, as you rightly said, Jack, through to fourth place, but he's going to need more than that. He cannot afford for Adrian to stretch out this championship lead even further. I mean, at the moment, just looking at oh, it. Surely oh, not. big look up the inside, but no way through. At the moment, it will be another six points that Adrian is able to stretch out that championship lead by if things stay as they are. It's a total disaster for Trav. Came into this one leading the championship after a, a plucky performance at our last round, despite two disappointing qualifying grid slots. Ooh, can he find his way through to third? No, he can't, despite the distance mistake. And now suddenly, he's almost throwing away that championship Four titles looks like a, a stretch at the moment for Trask if he can't find something special here in the table. Well, this is a big race, this for Trask, because so far, in the last three or four races in this 2022 Global Series, we've seen Trask hasn't really had the pace of the top guys at the front. He's been struggling to rival the likes of Christian, Adrian Pira Ricciuti, and even Andrea Severi on the Suzuki as well. So Trask Severi, he's got to bite back and show these guys that he is the champ, he is the king, and this one is going to be his for the taking. And off of Index there, that's a shame. He's been having a, a solid run of results of late as the Rising Stars two-time champion, now getting his first go full-time in the Global Series. But despite that crash, clearly there's been some comings together further down the field because he still settles into seventh spot. He's actually not lost any positions there at all. Meanwhile, here's what the championship looks like then if things were to stay as they are. And Adrian would hold a commanding 11.5 point advantage over Trast heading to our series finale. But remember, of course, double points on offer in Valencia, meaning that pretty much any of those top four guys, if they go out and do the double in Valencia, the championship is theirs because there'll be 20 point swing going in their favor. So it's regardless of what anyone else is able to do. That'll be the key message, I'm sure, from the teams back at base. Go out there, focus on yourself. If you win both races in Valencia, the championship will be yours. So there are no excuses for Adrian, Trask, Severi and Christian if things stay just like that before the checker flag comes out. I'll tell you what, Jack, we may not have a battle for the lead, but look at this from Piero Ricciuti, 0.4 back to Christian, 0.3 back to Trasaveri, 0.2 back to Saveri, and then only half a second back to Jackhammer as well. So from second to sixth, we've got a train of riders here, and these are the big six that we've spoken about all season long, and they're proving why we call them that so far. And I tell you what, Adrian is proving why he was a world champion as well. Three victories to his name so far. He's looking like he's on course for a fourth one here. This is one of the most dominant rides I've seen so far this year, Jack. We're only completed four, or sorry, we've only completed three laps. We're on lap Ooh, four of 10. Man. And he's already a second and a half clear, half a second a lap. He's absolutely mullering everyone else at the moment. Yeah, well, we know that Honda own the Mategi circuit here in Japan. So certainly doing them a favor in their own backyard right now. Of Adrian looking on 
to go and pick up his second race win of the evening and drag himself to an 11 and a half point championship lead. I tell you what though, that second Honda, the LCR Honda of Christian MM17 is starting to look busy. Piero Ricciuti, if he wasn't already un under pressure, he definitely is now. And look at that, speaking about pressure, that's as close as it can get really. Andrea Severi constantly on that rear tire of the Yamaha M1 in front of it. On lap four of 10 here around Mategi, and Adrian at the front has checked out. It looks as though we've got ourselves a fight for second at the moment, which is a surprise. Very, very unusual for someone to have this kind of dominance in MotoGP eSport as we focus in on our reigning world champion, Trast, into fourth at the moment. But he's got the pretty difficult job here of looking forwards at Christian and trying to find a way through, and also keeping an eye over his shoulder with Severi closing in at a rapid rate. It looks as though he's found a good run through the final corner here, and we could have some moves into the opening corner. Here we go, we're gonna track Trast all the way down to turn one. He looks to the inside. Ooh. Did fancy it for a second, but eventually, thought better of Always it, but Christian, Christian goes wide there, we'll cut it back, make sure that he swings right in front of the front wheel of Trast behind him, and he just about holds on, and it's no surprise that Trast has been able to close in on Christian there, he's just set the fastest lap of the race last time around, the 140.777. Yeah, so Trast then flying quite literally, triple seven, he's a big air bus coming through, <laughs> <laughs> Certainly Trast the very then, he's got the bit between his teeth. But as we do say, look at this now, he's under a tenth. Surely oh. he's going to try and move up the inside here, or maybe not. I was having flashbacks to 2010 there, Valentino Rossi and Jorge Lorenzo, but doesn't quite look like he's going to be able to go for it. This is the one thing with Mategi that's always so tricky. As soon as you get out of one corner and you get going a little bit, get a bit of a run on the rider ahead of you, you're back on the brakes. There's no real time to kind of build your momentum and get alongside them to try and dive down the inside. It's a very, very tricky and technical track, this. And one that if you're oh. gonna make a move, it often requires a mistake just like that. Christian then, just as I was about to say, goes wide, does get a better run coming out of the hairpin there. Rushing now down the hill towards turn 11. Trastaveri's gonna have the better line. He can just squeeze Christian there to the outside, which he does. Fantastic, can he get it stopped? Oh, no, he doesn't, wide. he goes wide himself. So here we go then, heading towards the final flip-flop. Is he going to drop it over his nose? No, he cuts back under. Fantastic <laughs> racecraft there from Christian. Is he going to hold on to it? I believe he is. Fantastic stuff from the LCR Honda back. Wow, incredible in the space of what was that? Five corners, they swap position four or five times. Incredible between Christian and Trask. And it's not done there as well because here comes Severi. Mistake from Trask, ever so slightly wide. And the Suzuki man doesn't need a second invitation. And suddenly the world champion dropped from third to fifth in the space of three corners. It's turning into a disaster day for Trask as the championship seemingly slips through his fingers. And this is that trait of Mategi playing out. One second you're the hunter, the next you become the hunted. And that is exactly what happened with Trask there. Picked off just as he was trying to pick Christian off himself. Incredible stuff. I cannot believe how much those guys swapped and changed there. First, let's just recap. Christian, the mistake into turn 10. Trast pouncing on that. But then Trast on the run down to 11. Ran ever so wide. They were side by side. As we flick through 12 and 13. And then suddenly, out of the final corner, Severi managed to get a good drive. And he was able to pounce on another small, uncalculated error from Trast to drop him down to fifth. Wow, what a series of corners that was. And I think... We're not done yet either. Out to the final corner then. Oh, sorry, down onto the back straight, should I say. Here we and go. Here comes Trask. Run. He's looking to make amends here of one lap ago. This is where he oh. lost third spot. And now he's looking to gain one spot. He's going to have to push to very wide. I think he's got it done. Has he got his nose in front? No, he doesn't. Severi fires back through. He has the inside line and he makes good use of it. But he's going to be so, so compromised there out to the final corner. An opportunity now surely for Trask to bounce back and bite back into the opening corner. Can he look through? No, he can't. 
Oh, has he gone deep? Surely he's gone deep there. He has, he has. There goes Trask. The Yamaha M1 squeezes through. And again, they're at it. Shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow. On the drive up towards turn three and four. And Severi looks to have it under control for now. But oh, he's no, wide he doesn't. again. He's wide again. And surely now he's going to throw it away. Yes, he does. He gives one place to Trask. And Jack Hammer fancies getting in on the act as well. Severi will hold the inside line as we run down towards turn five here. And hopefully... He can now hold on to fifth at the bare minimum because he's got Jack Hammer all of a sudden swarming over his rear wheel. Well, I was about to say there, fantastic work from Andrea Severi to withstand the pressure, not crack underneath it, but he does. We thought he'd had it done and defended off the attack there from Trask, but one final mistake was enough to seal the deal. And now all of a sudden he's got a pesky Red Bull KTM looking every which way, up the inside, round the outside, just go through him, Jack, go on. You've got to bust the issue in eSport. It seems as though he isn't an... Oh, mistake from Trastevere then. He slipped back once again. Another mistake here. This is incredible. We, as soon as we think one person's got it all under control, nipped up through into fourth place, the other makes a mistake again. Well, the usually unflappable Italian is flapping all over the place today. Crashing three times in Buriram. Here he goes. And countless Ooh. errors here in Mategi. He's a little bit wide there. And Jack Hammer will be fancying that he can squeeze in front now as well. Can you believe it? What, are these, what has he had for breakfast? Because whatever he has had, make sure that he doesn't have it for breakfast when we get to Valencia. And that is probably one of the worst analogies that I've ever had. But still, let's run with it. Well, we'll have to find out what he has had for breakfast in case it is that. But certainly, this round four in the Global Series, then, it is the keystone to Trastevere's championship. Falling apart if it does so happen to turn out like that at the end of round five in Valencia. Looks like he's gone in deep again there. Just a fraction. So allows Jack Hammer to close up a fraction more. Look at that Jack Hammer leaning into the TV there. He's certainly getting close, getting keen. He can smell a fifth place. It's just right in front of him. Oh, it's great to see these guys <laughs> concentrating and just watching Jack Hammer instead of the action just to see if Trust was to make a mistake, if his little eyes do light <laughs> up, I'm sure <laughs> he might get a little bit wider. Yeah, I'm sure the whites <laughs> of his pupils will start glowing in that morning <laughs> sunlight back in the UK. Jack Hammer, of course, flying the flag for Great Britain here in the MotoGP eSports oh, series. Oh, he's gone deep. There's That's a mistake. mistake. Yep, and he glances, he has a sly look to his left-hand side, and I'm sure he'll be tutting under his breath at making a costly mistake there. It's just allowed Trask to pull ever so slightly clear. It was under a tenth of a second, but it's now three tenths of that gap. Back at the front, though, as everything is going off behind, with riders swapping and changing corner after corner, lap after lap, there are no such problems for this man. No, faultless out front, absolutely metronomic. No errors at all. We've seen him maintain that gap of around 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. The whole race, as soon as he got through to the front, well, he was at the front straight away, and he just hasn't been able to give them any sort of hope that they would be able to close him down. Of course, there we see Piero Ricciuti. He withstood the pressure from Christian so far. Half a second back, you'd have to say that it's too far for Christian to make a lunge. And as we saw in the last race, though, Christian on that last lap just turned the wick up to 11 and put in a final charge. Couldn't quite get there. Can he do it again this time round and make it stick? Here's Trust and the world champion. For how long? That is a, an interesting question and one we'll get an answer to on Friday evening in Valencia. Make sure you join us for the grand finale. As we've said, double points on offer and the championship will swing one way or the other. You don't want to miss that. Friday evening, as we said, at the Valencian Grand Prix. We'll see you there. The bright lights of the Global Series Arena return in 2022. So very though, he's not looking forward to booking any flights to Valencia just yet because he's got one and a half laps to go to try and hold off a world champion behind him and a fired up Red Bull KTM rider as well. So far, so good though for Severi. He's managed to eke out enough of an advantage here for it to be a fairly comfortable final lap if he's able to hit all of his markers and make sure that it's a mistakeless final lap. Ricciuti, the same goes for him as well. Victory is definitely out of contention now as we come out of the final corner for the penultimate time. 
but he will be looking over his shoulder. Already going defensive there is Ricciuti. He's not going to leave anything to chance. Two tenths. That gap has closed up. And look, yep. visibly as well. Christian Once again. There, there. He is with him. And I tell you what, if there's just the slightest of openings, he's going to be firing that assy 213V through it. Yeah, so just like last time then, Christian is on the hunt in this final lap. And you have to say as well, quick shout out to Pierre Ricciuti because this is probably his most solid round so far in 2022. We thought he'd be one of these guys that was contending for race wins every single time in 2022, but it hasn't quite ruled out to be that way. But here tonight, in round four, he's done much better indeed. But you have to say the biggest thing, we all thought that maybe Christian MM17 would be the headline once again at this yep. round four but indeed it is his brother and it just goes to show that we never should have questioned whether he was going to be able to pull it out of the bag or not. Yeah, there's something in the water in the Montenegro household at the moment. Double victory for Christian at round three and now we're just half a lap away from a double victory for Adrian two at round number four. That. Yep, it's been a solo speed show from Adrian. He's pulled clear on that opening lap and Did you hear that? Does not look big sigh of yet. relief there. I don't know if that was a sigh of relief or just one last nervous <laughs> intake of breath to try and get through this final sector. Here we are then into turns 12, 13 and 14. He's got 12 done, he's got 13 done and he's now got 14 done. What a performance! It's double delight for Adrian as he carries all of the momentum in towards our season finale in Valencia. A commanding win, a commanding championship lead. It's all gone his way tonight. Into the hot seat then goes Adrian. A fantastic performance just when he needs to. He's hit the ground running. Fantastic stuff then. We all thought that it was maybe going to be the LCR Honda that would steal the headlines, but no. Piero Ricciuti takes second ahead of the aforementioned LCR Honda rider, Christian. You have to say, Andrea Severi as well, can't be too disappointed with his evening's work after some damage limitation in the first race, and a solid fourth there. But there you see it then, double victory confirmed for Adrian. Not quite the fastest lap, but he just beat them with consistency there. Piero Ricciuti second, Christian MM17 third, Andrea Severi, and the big talking point is Trastevere once again misses out on a podium. He's at four races without a podium now. When was the last time we said that about Trastevere? the three-time champ. Jack Hammer comes across in sixth from Vindex, David Lady Alinea, Spadalongo, Umastru, Mr. T and Tati Go rounding us out. We've only got two races left. We'll see you in Valencia for them. Double delight then for Adrian here at round four of the 2022 Global Series. Now a 12.5 championship advantage. Go in the way of the Repsol Honda Man as we head to Valencia for our season finale. Double points, so everything up for grabs, as we mentioned in the race there. Those top four guys all know if they win both races at the last round, the championship will be theirs. But before we speak about that, let's give Adrian his moment in the sunshine. A double win, Adrian. A much needed double win as well. Now four for the season. Just how good does that one feel? Yes, I think uh, the race was uh, that I wanted. I wanted to, to start and uh, st and uh, to be first in the in the first call and uh, try to, to make a gap because I know in this track it's very difficult to, to be in, uh, in group in group. And uh, fortunately for me, I could uh, I could do it and I am very happy with the victory again because uh, uh, another uh, some point uh, for the for the championship. But now I know that uh, uh, the last race in Valencia with double points uh, will be very important, but it's very important to, to, to be first in the, in the last round. So I am very happy and see you in, in Valencia. Yeah, we'll see you there, mate. Can't wait. And I just wonder, Jack, if we may well be sharing a, a glass of Prosecco with that man <laughs> in Valencia yep. in a month or so's time. Now, uh, Without doubt, the big, big favourite heading to Valencia. And you have to be a brave man to bet against him, not wrapping up a second title if he can pull 
two performances out of the bag like we just saw in Mategi. That was some ride. Yeah, it really was some ride. You just saw there. I mean, well, he, he said it perfectly himself. He said it was difficult to win a race in the pack here around Mategi. And of course, alluding to the amount of mistakes that it was so easy to make around this track. We saw mistakes from Trastevere, Andrea Severi, Christian, and also Jack Hammer as well, as those guys battled for those positions in the top five or six. But out front, of course, Andrian with that perfect start, rocket ship start, got the whole shot and just never, ever looked back. Yeah, brilliant stuff. It was brilliant action further back as well. We just saw a glimpse of it there. Trust Christian, Severi swapping and changing as often as you like it with Jack Hammer trying to get in on the acts as well in the closing stages. But it was all about this man. A two second lead as he came across the line. Dominance from Adrian to take a double win here tonight. So before we leave you then, let's take a look at the championship standings. Only one round to go. I know we've mentioned it a lot, but double points on offer in case you weren't listening. Just to add a little bit of extra spice into the mix, which means despite Adrian leading the way, any of those top four men, Adrian, Trav, Severi, or Christian can wrap up this 2022 Global Series by going out and winning both races in Valencia. 17 points splitting our top four. Jack. Yeah, very close indeed, as you do say, those double points just make everything that little bit easier to be within reach. It's going to be very interesting indeed as we go down to those final two races. But really, the key is going to be all about qualifying. We've seen there and we've seen so many times throughout this series this year that if you qualify on those front two rows, you are on for a much better race than those qualifying on the third and fourth row that we've seen so many times. There we go. Sorry, my Siri, my watch is just getting involved <laughs> there. She's clearly enjoyed uh, this morning's racing, as have I, as have Jack. Thank you very much to Jack for doing a, a brilliant job, as always. All the guys back in Barcelona as well for doing a, an excellent job. And thanks to all of you at home as well for tuning in for this round four of the 2022 Global Series. I hope you enjoy the Japanese Grand Prix, which is coming your way very shortly. And as we've said, do not miss our season finale in Valencia. Double points and offer Friday night in Valencia. Fireworks, glitz, glamour. What more could you want? We'll see you there.